Hello friends, welcome to another edition of Bronco Sports Weekly. I am Sean Fagan here in the gymnastics room in the attic of Reed Fieldhouse. We'll be talking with Lindsay and Bryn Winkowski of the Bronco gymnastics team a little bit later today. But before we do that, let's look at what happened this past weekend. Men's Hoops extended their MAC win streak to four games last week, beating both of their in-state rivals, Eastern Michigan and Central Michigan. Darius Paul added 11 points and 9 rebounds in the Broncos' 63-59 win against the Eagles, one of four Bronco players to break double figures. Shane Whittington recorded 20 points in the Broncos' win over the Chippewas on Saturday, and Brandon Pokley had 10 points and 9 rebounds. The Broncos won that game by 17. Hockey hosted the Michigan Wolverines at Lawson Ice Arena for a full weekend series, and the Broncos hung it on their cross-state rivals with a pair of victories. The Broncos came back from a two-goal deficit on Friday, scoring three unanswered goals to defeat the Wolverines 3-2 in front of a standing room only crowd. Goals came from Trevor Elias, Jordan Osterley, and Colton Hargrove. The Broncos routed the Wolverines 5-1 on Saturday, with Hargrove adding two more goals. Women's basketball split a pair of Mack road games last week, earning their second straight win with a victory over Northern Illinois on Wednesday before losing at Buffalo on Saturday. Markeisha Harris and Miracle Woods each notched 12 points for the Broncos, and WMU shot 51.9% from the field in the second half to put the game against the Huskies away. Harris would also add 12 points in the game at Buffalo, and A.J. Johnson scored 11. Women's tennis split a pair of road matches over the weekend, defeating the Butler Bulldogs 6-1 in Indianapolis before falling 7-0 to number 50 Indiana on Sunday. Four Broncos went 2-0 in the match against the Bulldogs, including Maggie Rominzi, who ran her singles match win streak to five overall. The Broncos are 3-1 this season. Men's tennis also earned a split last weekend, beating IPFW 7-0 on Friday afternoon before falling to Green Bay 4-3 in the nightcap. Nadine and Indre earned wins in the number one doubles against the Mastodons and number one singles against the Phoenix. And both Ruben Grinder and Andrew Kahn reached three overall wins on the day. The Broncos host Princeton this week before traveling to Michigan. Gymnastics squared off against the preseason favorite Kent State Golden Flashes on the road on Friday, with the Broncos falling just narrowly short 194.675 to 194.125. Freshman Jesse Bice had the only first place finish for the Broncos, tying for the win on the vault. And track and field competed at the Indiana Relays over the weekend, with the middle distance crew ranking as the top performers for the weekend. The distance medley relay team of Kara Kremians, Alexis Hull, Aisha Hodge, and Rachel Whitley took second with a time of 1156.58, less than half a second behind Indiana for the win. In the jumps, Iris Campbell took second in the long jump, just a quarter inch behind Vanderbilt's Skylar Carpenter. And now let's take a look at the highlights from this past weekend. Men's basketball taking on the Eastern Michigan Eagles, a team that beat them twice last year. The Broncos have never lost three times in a row to Eastern Michigan under head coach Steve Hawkins. The post players would be a big part of this game. Shane Whittington would dominate down low with 14 points for the Broncos against the Eagles. Coach Hawkins challenged his bigs to be point guards for the team. There's Whittington knocking down a jump shot, and Darius Paul down low would lay it in. He would have double-digit points, and he would also add nine rebounds for the Broncos. Nate Hutchison drives the baseline and lays it in. Western Michigan would win 63-59. to It was their third straight win in MAC play. They improved to 11-7 overall. Bronco Hockey hosting Michigan. They trailed 2-0 at one point, now trailing 2-1. Jordan Osterley going to tie the score for the Broncos with the slapper through traffic. The Broncos would tie the game at two goals apiece. From there would be Colton Hargrove. He's been a beast for the Broncos this season so far, and he's willing to pay a physical price in front of the net. Takes the cross check, but he slaps it in. The Broncos would defeat Michigan 3-2 on Friday night, the first of a weekend series against the Wolverines. Bronco hockey would be even better on Saturday night. Trailing 1-0, Shane Birschbach would get things rolling for the Broncos. That one skips past the goaltender, tying the game up at one goal apiece. From there, the Broncos would light the lamp. Kenny Morrison from the faceoff circle, twisted wrister. Top left corner, the Broncos take the 2-1 lead. Remember Colton Hargrove, he had a pretty good game on Friday night. Hargrove would be a beast in this game as well. Two on one, takes the pass, can't quite control it, but he still slips it past the goaltender. The Broncos would lead the Wolverines by a score of three to one. Take another look, Hargrove gets tripped up on his way to the net, still directs it past the goaltender. Later in the game, Josh Pitt gonna sneak one on the far side. 
going the angle on the goaltender, puts it low in the right-hand corner. The Broncos would lead 4-1. to one. And then to put the cherry on top of the Sunday, Hargrove one more time takes the feed in front of the net. He loves to score those dirty goals. Flips that one over the goaltender's shoulder. The Broncos would defeat Michigan 5-1. to one. Welcome back to Bronco Sports Weekly. I am now joined by two gymnasts from our Western Michigan gymnastics team, nationally ranked. Just got done taking on the preseason MAC favorite Kent State Golden Flashes, but the Broncos will have something to say about that before the season's over when they host the MAC championships at University Arena. I'm talking to Lindsay and Bryn Winkowski. Ladies, when was the last time somebody confused you two, other than the time I confused you two <laughs> right before we started the interview? Probably yesterday. Uh, yeah. It happens it, most days. It does happen a lot. <laughs> what happened? Is it typically just like uh, you're wearing the same thing, or is it just hard for people to tell? I think it's hard for people to tell. If they don't like see us every day, it's a little confusing, but a lot of people like think they're offending us, but it's not a big deal. We're, We're pretty, pretty used to yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Now, you guys have had the opportunity to see the gymnastics program here grow over the four years you've been here. Obviously, uh, started out not where you guys wanted to be, but now nationally ranked and uh, you gave Kent everything they could handle and more on Friday. What's it been like to see that growth here? It's been really cool to watch the program develop in the way it has with Dave coming here our freshman year. We really lucked out and I think we got a really cool opportunity to see just the growth over four years and everything playing out the way it has, it pretty much exactly like Dave planned. What's it been work, like working with Casey Joe and all the experience she brought coming from the SEC at Arkansas and being such an accomplished gymnast? It's been really fun. Casey's just been an awesome asset to the program. We went from having Dave and he was doing a great job, but she's just like perfect working with him and they really complement each other really well. And it's fun to have someone who's had the experiences in the SEC and she can relate a lot to us. So it's really nice. Now I talked before about you guys coming here four years ago. I have to know, was it a package deal? <laughs> Were you two like, um, we, we're coming no. together, we're not doing <laughs> No, it wasn't our plan to look at schools like specifically where we could go together. We wanted to make the decision that was going to be best for us individually. So um, I actually committed to Western first and kind of waited for Lindsay. <laughs> she thought that I we could know. go separately, but I knew it would be hard. I wasn't sure yet what I wanted to do when she committed here. So I thought we would be fine splitting up. I was like, it's not going to affect my decision. I'm going to do what I want, not what she's already doing. But just worked out that we both loved it here and chose to go here. Now, is that something that your personalities have shown over the course of years? Are you more willing to do your own thing, have your own groups of friends, your own activities, or have you always been pretty tight? Yeah, we, uh, we have some pretty significant differences, <laughs> I'd say. Um, I guess, well, we're going into totally separate fields yeah. of study and work, so that's been a big difference, I think, throughout college. and. Um, Friends-wise, I guess in college we have mostly the same mostly friends. The same friend, yeah. Towards the end of high school we kind of started doing our own thing. and It's always nice that we can kind of do our own thing, but we always kind of end up back together and just complement each other well. Well, there you go. Now, <laughs> one of the things I like about gymnastics is the fact that at your competitions, before you go into your individual events, you know, most coaches in most sports will want to talk to their players before they go out there, but uh, you guys support each other. It's not really a coach player relationship, it's more of a, an athlete athlete relationship. Yeah, each of us kind of has someone that before we go up to compete, you already know who's going to come talk to you and um, they kind of just know what to say to you before you go to like get into your head right. Some people need to hear something like really tough and in your face, but some people just need to breathe and calm down before they go. So it's nice to have your person that you can talk to. What do you say to your sister before she competes? <laughs> um, I tell her to stay calm and stay confident and just to go up there and do her thing and rock it out and just do your best. What do you say? Oh, uh, pretty much the same thing. <laughs> kind of the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, just we tell each other just do what we know how and kind of pump each other up a little bit. It's psyched to go. All right, well, you guys are heading to uh, lovely Morgantown, West Virginia this weekend, so I wish you all the best of luck in your competition and for the rest of the season. Thank, Thank you very much. And now let's take a look at what's coming up this weekend for the Broncos. Hockey faces one of its toughest remaining road tests of the season when they go to Big Rapids for a weekend series against the Fair State Bulldogs. The puck drops at 7.05 on both nights, and you can catch Friday's game on the full Bronco radio network. Saturday's game will be on 5.90 a.m. The Broncos are in sole possession of first place in the CCHA standings thanks to their sweep over the Wolverines this past weekend. Men's basketball will look to keep it rolling in MAC play when they travel to Oxford, Ohio to take on the Miami Redhawks on Wednesday before hosting Buffalo on Saturday night. 
That's right, I said Saturday night. Tip-off scheduled for 7 p.m. and we need you to pack the stands as the Broncos host the Bulls. Women's basketball looks to bounce back after a loss to Buffalo when they host the Ball State Cardinals at University Arena on Wednesday night. They'll go on from there to take on the Toledo Rockets in a Sunday afternoon game on the road. The ball tips off at 7 p.m. on Thursday and at noon on Sunday. Men's tennis takes on a pair of top programs this week, hosting the Princeton Tigers on Thursday before traveling to Michigan to take on the Wolverines on Sunday. The match against Princeton scheduled for a 6 p.m. start on Thursday evening, and the Tigers feature the number two singles player in the country. Don't want to miss that one. And the match against the Wolverines starts at 6.30 on Sunday. Gymnastics will get back on the road this week when they go to Morgantown for a meet with the West Virginia Mountaineers. Also at the meet will be the Oklahoma Sooners and the William & Mary Braves. That is scheduled for a 7 p.m. start on Friday evening. And finally, track and field will make the relatively short trek to South Bend this weekend when they participate in the Mayo Invitational hosted by Notre Dame. And that's going to do it for us this weekend on Bronco Sports Weekly. I'm Sean Fagan saying join us again next week. Same Bronco time, same Bronco place.